tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Yes, the world is established, it shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad, and the earth, let the earth rejoice, let the sea roar, and all that fills it. Let the field exult, and everything in it. Then shall all the trees in the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness, and the people in his faith. Join me in prayer. Lord God, we thank you that you have brought us here, that you have cared for our every need, that you see fit. Lord God, to give us your grace and your mercy on this we have to take. Be thankful. We are thankful, Lord, that you are faithful to us even when we are faithless. Help us now, Lord, to give all of our adoration to you. Help us to quiet our minds and our hearts, to come before you, to lay our, our lives before you, Lord, and give them into your tender care that we might worship you now. Help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand and sing with me. Number 229, number 229 in the hymnal, if you like to open the hymnal, Our God Way.
everyone mine. Welcome home to the Fort Leavenworth Community Chapel. Just a few announcements. I refer you to your bulletin for the other things that are going on. But first of all, this afternoon, 1300 to 1500 a family bowling event at Most Prime the Bowling Center. Shoes and pizza will be provided. Just don't mix up the two. I look forward to seeing everybody there. Next week, next Sunday, we're having a designated offering for the Gideons. And also next week, we have our servant leadership dinner uh, beginning at 1700. Uh, if you're a newcomer, we ask that you take the bulletin, tear out the tear out portion in the back and fill that out, put it in the offering plate as it goes by. Otherwise, if you have a prayer request, you can put that on the other side and put it in the offering plate. We have a time of fellowship after the service. Donuts and coffee, my left, your right, and then another left up the hall. All right, if this is your first time or your 200th time here, while you're here, this is your church home. And there's a place for you here. With that in mind, when we go to our next greeting, look, search out for those that you don't know all that well or you haven't seen before, and Welcome them home here. So if you are able, please stand up and greet one another in the love of Christ.
Sunday. Since we forgot to mention one thing, especially for those new here in the congregation, since today is Communion Sunday, our children will remain here with us throughout the worship services and be ready to partake in communion together as a family. So there will be no children in church this morning. So just to let you know in case you are sending them out after the reading and, and uh, find yourselves confused. So. Every week, we have the privilege, and I mean the privilege, of reciting the Apostles' Creed, the affirmation of the fundamental truths of our faith, the very basis on which our faith is founded, the truths that we need to remind ourselves, that we might remember whose we are, so that we might be who we are in Jesus every day of the week. So in light of that, preach to yourselves the truths of the gospel and proclaim the Apostles' Creed. Christians, what do you believe? What do we believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You may be seated. Please join me for a brief time in prayer. Father, we thank you. Lord God, we adore you. And for all the areas of our hearts that struggle to adore you, Lord, we ask that you would give our hearts eyes to see, ears to hear the wonders of who you are and all that you have done and will do for us. Lord God, we thank you. Please help us to have thankful hearts. It is so tempting and so difficult throughout the week to turn inward and to think of all the things that we think we should have that we don't have. And we begin to grumble and mutter and complain, much like your people did throughout the time in Egypt. Help us to know, to remember the joy of your salvation, that you have delivered us from slavery to sin, that we might be a thankful people. Lord, that we would see you at work in every nook and cranny of our lives and be thankful for what you have done and what you are doing for us. That your promises would be more than ethereal ideas, but they would be true and tangible in our lives. Help us, Lord God, to be thankful. Lord, as we lift up our needs that we have in you, we ask that you would hear our prayers. Lord God, for all of our brothers and sisters around the world who follow you, who have trusted in you, who serve you gladly, please bless your church. Please bless those missionaries, those churches who are now being persecuted for your name's sake. Be with them today, even as they suffer for you. Encourage them. Give them all that they need. They would hold fast to your word of Jesus, denying themselves in the face of suffering, proclaiming your glory. Claiming your work in our lives. And Lord, help us to remember that. Help us to pray for them also that we might be inspired by what you are doing through your people for your glory. Lord, I pray for the churches here in our country as well as the churches here locally, that they would be a beacon of light, the truth of the gospel, that they would not shy away, that we would not shy away from your goodness from your greatness, from your glory, and from your grace. That our lives would be examples, that they would be instruments of grace to all around us, in our families, starting our marriages, with our children, with our neighbors, with our co-workers, with all those that we put in our path, that we would be present with you so that you might be present with them. Help us, Lord, when we fail you in this, Help us to remember your grace for our failures. That who we are is because of who you are for us, and not because of what we do for you. Lord God, for all of the needs here, physical, medical, financial, the 
burden as any of those in our congregation are carrying. Please help us, Lord God. Please be with those in need right now. Be with them spiritually. Be with them, Lord God, today as a reminder of your goodness and your faithfulness to them. Be with them, Lord God, through others in your body, the hands and feet of Jesus, that we would minister to one another faithfully. Because of your love for us. And even now, Lord God, as we carry the burdens, help us to have thankful and gracious, giving hearts of gratitude that we seek to serve you with our resources. And help us to steward those resources well. And Lord God, as we prepare also to hear your word, please be with Anthony as he prepares. Even now, as he's praying fervently to you, Lord God, that your spirit will work in and through him. That he also be an instrument of grace on your behalf for us. Speak through him, I pray, trust you. And Lord, as we seek your will, as we seek to be obedient disciples, help our lives, help the words of our mouth, the thoughts of our mind, Lord, be united to you. And Lord, help us to pray as you taught your disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Yes. <coughs>
Be with us now, Lord, as we store these things all to your glory, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. scripture this morning is from Acts chapter 4, verses 23 to 37. That can be found on page 1042 in your pew Bibles. Acts 4, 23 to 37. When they were released, they went to their friends and reported what the chief priests and the elders had said to them. And when they heard it, they lifted their voices together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them who through the mouth of our father David your servant and by the Holy Spirit why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples plot in vain the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed for truly in this city they were gathered together against your holy servant Jesus whom you anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate along with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, look upon their threats and grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness. While you stretch out your hand to heal, and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. Now the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. And with great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold and laid it at apostles' feet. And it was distributed to each as any had need. Thus Joseph, who was also called by the apostles Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, a Levite, a native of Cyprus, had sold a field that belonged to him and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. May the Lord bless our reading and understanding of his word. Please be seated. Please be seated. Good morning. It's great to be with you. Uh, I'm Anthony uh, Foxworth. Josh, thanks for the opportunity to be here. Uh, I've been here about a month or so here for uh, CGSOC, and so excited to share with you uh, today God's word. Uh, whatever Josh said about me, sometimes he lies. Uh, or I paid him, also paid him to do it. He's been a good friend uh, since our days at uh, now Fort uh, Cavazos, Fort Hood. And so uh, walking hand in hand with him. And we had great community there. Uh, you've been in a series on the centrality of the gospel. Today is going to be a kind of unlock from that. We're going to do a standalone. And then you're going to go into a series on uh, gospel or biblical community, unless you change it, okay? And so uh, today we're going to look at this idea of the early church coming here. I just want to warn you, I grew up in the home of a Southern Baptist chaplain. I may get loud just for the sound booth guy. You, you'd never known me before. We didn't do a sound check, but just so you know, I won't get uh, screaming, but it may get inflection for purpose. And so we read the, the, this passage in Acts 4. Uh, it says when they were released in verse 23, but released from where? Well, they had just been uh, detained or arrested. Why? Because they boldly proclaimed the good news of Jesus Christ in the temple. Well, they had gone there in Acts chapter 3, right after Acts chapter 2, where you see the march of the faith. 3,000 people are saved and baptized, and now they're walking into the temple. And what happens? There's a, there's a lame beggar uh, 
lying there because he can't stand, he can't walk, and he asks for money, for goods, for things so that he can live. And in Acts chapter 3, uh, Peter and John, they say to him, uh, Silver and gold have I not, that's the King James Version, but rise, but get up and walk in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The scripture said this man is over 40. There would be no reason why this would, uh, wouldn't would happen apart from the healing of Jesus Christ. The man stood up and walked. And everybody was in awe. Now, if it had stopped right there, they would have went home, had a party, and it would have been great. But it didn't stop. Because you see, Peter and John boldly proclaimed that the reason why you see this man walking is because the one that you hated, the one you denied, the one you killed, the Lord Jesus Christ, God's anointed, he healed him. <laughs> they didn't like that. They didn't like that at all. And in fact, the Sadducees, who did not believe what? Resurrection. There we go. We got some biblical scholars in here. They did not believe in the resurrection. They came and arrested them. They had to spend the night in jail, right? Many of you have done that, I know. But it's okay. Confessions later, uh, one to another changed for. And so they had to wait for the next day. And then they, they put them on this kind of trial. But who did this? Why do you preach this Jesus? And in Acts chapter uh, 4, it says now that in verse 13, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uh, uneducated common men, they were astonished. There's hope for all of us. Okay? God used them mightily, uneducated uh, and uh, common men. There's hope for all of us here. But guess what they recognized? And they recognized that they had been with Jesus. Peter and John are proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. And what do the people have to say? Verse 14 of John of uh, Acts chapter 4. But seeing the man who was healed standing beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. The proof was in the man. There's no pudding. The proof is in the healing. The proof is in the Prince of Peace. And so then they were released. That's where we pick up in the reading today. And they went with their friends and reported what the chief priests and elders had said to them. But if you back up, you know, this man that came to follow and believe in Jesus Christ, Jesus prayed for him. And you know Jesus prayed for you? John chapter 17. What did he pray John chapter 17, this is the night before he is betrayed, the hours before he is betrayed. He's in the garden. John 17, verse 20 and 21, he says this, I do not ask for these, meaning his current disciples only, but also for those who believe through their word. That's you and me. We have believed through their word passed down from generation to generation. That what? Verse 21, that they may all be one. Just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us. Why? So that the world may believe that you sent me. The world is watching us. And you know what they see? Division. Jesus prayed for unity. Why? That they may believe that you sent me. Today, I want to look at this idea of uh, embracing unity and un unlocking the pow uh, power of boldness and generosity. And what I want you to see, first of all, is that fostering unity in the church ignites an unwavering spirit of boldness, empowering believers to embrace their calling and not just protection. Do you see that's what happened here? The, the John and Peter did not shy away. They embraced God's calling on their life. Peter had just shied away 50 days, 60 days beforehand, denied Christ three times. And 40, 50 days later, what did God do? He used him mightily at Pentecost. Well, here we see that the unity of the church come together in the boldly, as they boldly proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. So they went back and what did they do? They prayed. They prayed, they recited Psalm 2, that's in verse 25 and 26. Why did the Gentiles, the nations rage? Why did the people's plot in vain? And 
Then he begins to say, For truly in this city there were uh, gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you appointed. And notice what they didn't pray for. They didn't pray for comfort. They didn't pray for their well-being. Verse 29, And now, Lord, look upon their threats and grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness. While you stretch out your hand to heal, and signs and wonders were performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. How could they do that? How could they boldly proclaim in a hostile environment the good news of Jesus Christ? Were they these special class of people? Did they have more knowledge? Was the Holy Spirit uh, more potent than that day? No. They were closer to Jesus, time-wise, in proximity. They had been. But the key to their boldness was the unity in community. In fact, I, I want to ask you, if you're a Christian here today, what keeps, holds you back from pro boldly proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ in your workplace, at your school, with your family, and in the community? Oftentimes, because we feel like we're all alone and we're the only people doing it. But can I tell you that we can do way more together than we can separate? COVID told us that. COVID uh, uh, calls to mental health hotlines went up 900% during COVID. I'm not talking about biblical community. I'm talking about people just need, we need each other as human beings. But we need each other in gospel community as well. This is why you just can't attend a, a service. Now, it's okay if you're online right now and, and you're watching because you're sick. But we need to be here. You need to shake hands. We need to embrace. We need to lock arms. We need to come hand in hand and be together with the gospel, boldly proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. Dane Orland, a, a author and pastor, a great book he wrote, uh, uh, Gentle and Lowly, about Jesus. Being gentle and lowly, read the book. He, he tweeted this. Staying home to watch church is like staying home from a friend's wedding to watch the ceremony virtually. And keeping your wedding gift with you. Your presence and solidarity and love and hugs and eye contact and singing are needed. It's not just about passively receiving something. It's about being an embodied part of the celebration. The whole event is diminished by your absence. And you have a gift to give. You matter. Not just to God, but you matter here. And you know what the gift that you have to give? It's you. You're the gift. You're the gift we're waiting for. You're the gift we're longing for. You're the gift we need. You're the gift that magnifies the name of Jesus Christ. You're the gift that puts hands and feet to the gospel. Together we need each other. You have something that no one else has. Now I'm going to tell you that Instagram and the social media will tell you that. That you're special. It's all about you. Can I tell you? It's not all about you. We know it's all about God, but it's all about us together. Because let me tell you, when you hit failure and burnout and your red line in your life, looking in the mirror will not help. But digging deep down to Almighty God through His Word and people like Josh Grimes, who's been for, there for me, lifted me up and said, you can go on. That's what we need. That's what we need. We need gospel community. Not just being our best self. Our calling is to build up each other with our gifts and share the good news of Jesus Christ with the world around us. Hear me. The only way that the world is going to hear boldly, the gospel boldly proclaimed, is that if we do it together. You may think, well, I'm only here for a year. I, I shouldn't get real involved. That's a lie. I've been here for 25 years. I've already served my time. That's a lie. And everything in between. We need you now. I need you. He needs you. God needs you. Why? Because that's how you've been created. To be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. And that's where your purpose and calling come out to be. We are able to share Jesus boldly with others supporting and doing it with us. 
if I want to go for a run, or if I want to get in shape, or in better shape, and, and Josh comes, and I know he's going to come to my house and say, let's go for a run, I'm going to be ready. But let me tell you what, if Josh Tubbs doesn't come to my house at like 5 in the morning, I'm not going to be up. I don't like running. I hate it, actually. Right? But when he comes, I'm like, all right, got to go. When people lock arm in arm with each other, and to encourage and challenge and keep us accountable and help us along, we can boldly proclaim the good news together. We can get in spiritual shape together. And you notice what they prayed. They prayed for boldness. And do and you see what happened in verse 31? And when they had prayed, that place in which they gathered together was shaken and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak with the words of boldness. Do you expect God to move when you pray? Not in a God does what I say type of way, but in praying in faith, knowing that God answers yes, no, not now. Those are three answers to prayers. The disciples didn't pray for protection, which is what most of us would pray for. They pray for boldness. Will you join me? And let's stop. Let's be okay with being uncomfortable. But let's be uncomfortable together. Let's be weird together. It's okay. And let's set Fort Leavenworth and the, and, and the, the, the army and the world on fire for the good news of Jesus Christ. Because there's a hurting world that is desperate for the gospel. It doesn't want to get it. Got a call this week that there's someone here. Or another chaplain going through a lot, hurting, kind of afraid to reach out, new. He's tried other things. I met with him on Friday, and he said, you know, I've never tried spirituality. And as we sat at the, at the PX, I just drew out a little diagram and used a verse, Romans 6.23, called One Verse Evangelism, and I shared the grace and good news of Jesus Christ. And this hurting man came to pray and receive Jesus. Do you know, even when he met with me, even when he knew as a chaplain, even when he came and, and said, I need help with a certain thing, I wanted to start giving some psychology and do this and do this. And then he's like, I really think I need spirituality. And God was like, now is your time. And he prayed to receive Jesus Christ and followed him right there. And we spent most of the night. You can do the same thing. In fact, not just you can do the same thing. We can do that. And God is calling you to do that. And that, hear me, that is the only reason we're here to glorify Him and to tell people about Jesus Christ. Well, do you see the, the, the and then the rest of the passage? What did they do next? Now they were full in number of those who believed with one of with uh, uh, were of one heart. Notice that in soul, and no one said that any of the things that belonged to him were his own, but had everything in common. You'll see one uh, one heart, one soul. You'll see together in this. What they did in the in the rest of the passage that we read together is that we see that nurturing unity in the church cultivates a spirit of open heartedness, inspiring believers to embody generosity. Not the scarcity mentality. Let me tell you, I'm going to unpack that for you. The world is full of the scarcity mentality. It's mine, 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 mine. How we handle and are generous is evidence of the gospel alive in us. Nurturing unity in the church cultivates the spirit of uh, open heartedness. Are you open hearted or cold hearted? Closed hearted, sorry. Are you open hearted or closed hearted? You can use the hand. I don't like using open or closed hand. I want it to come from our heart. Any of us can throw money to a beggar. I want us to love them out of a response to God's word and us to give. How we handle our money has everything to do with how we orient on Jesus. The rich young ruler chose wealth over Jesus. But Zacchaeus, meeting the Messiah, uh, made him open-hearted and look, look, he loosed his grip, lost his grip on his material possessions. But I wanna, what I want you to see is that it's not just generosity, but biblical generosity, which is much more than a financial transaction. It's a spiritual discipline that has the power to transform every area of our lives. 
when giving is rooted in Scripture and responsive to God, we draw closer to His purpose for our lives, being the bearer, the image bearers of Jesus Christ. Scarcity says this, I don't have enough. We're all, people eat like this, they're worried that someone's going to take things from us. But can I tell you, my God is a provider. That's his name. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills, a song, reference to Psalm 50. He has all the resources for me and all his people. And can I tell you that we should never hear that there's a stingy Christian. It's an oxymoron. There should not be one. You can be frugal. You can be wise. But you shouldn't, if you're stingy, you are not worshiping God with your money. And can I tell you what? That will bring disunity in the church. And God wants unity through boldly proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. And he wants to do it through biblical generosity. I have a story I want to close with. And I'm, I'm, I always hesitate in telling this story to people who don't know me well. I was a new chaplain or, uh, at Fort Polk, now Fort Johnson, Louisiana. We had bought a used, I had a, uh, I drove a minivan for 10 years, uh, five of that with no air conditioning, two of that in Louisiana. Right? That's perseverance of the saints, my friends. <laughs> well, one day I was at the PX. Uh, we had just bought a used uh, car, we paid cash for it, now we had three cars. I was driving this van, we didn't really need it anymore. I was trying to get about 1500 bucks out of a 1999 uh, Plymouth Voyager, you know, just looking good, silver, no AC, sweating to death in Louisiana. Driving through the PX parking lot, saw a couple, and I felt the Lord impress upon me, give the van to them. <laughs> what? I'm trying to sell this van, get some money. So I circled the parking lot again and saw him, you know, park, got up, acted like a weirdo, walked up behind him, met him in the luggage uh, place of the PX. He was in uniform and said, hey, you don't know me, but I'm Anthony, I'm Anthony, I'm a Christian. They, they saw him in the chapel. I said, this may sound weird, but uh, I believe, I was like trembling. I believe God's told me to give you my van. It's a 1999 Plymouth Voyager, this is the year 2013. It has no air conditioning, but if you would like it, it's yours. And they just melted. A uh, young private, his wife, six-month-old baby, her parents. And I said, what? They said, our car, we bought an, a used car, and on the way here it broke down. We took it to the shop, and they told us the limit, that they cannot fix it. We would love to have you here. So we gave, I said, meet me at Jack Long and we did the transaction. They had to give me a dollar to get it back to them. And the van was theirs. They began to come to chapel, brought other people. God moved them in a, in a mighty way. You see, the story is, I, it's not about me being the hero. It's about God knowing a need and feeling a need. And I didn't want to give it. Just honestly, I wanted to make money. But after that, thing, things began to happen. And this is not a, a so or... Uh, prosperity gospel story. God began to provide for us in a way that I've never seen. People paid our tuition with cash at our door to our kids' private school. Lowe's called us and said, there's a new washer and dryer because we know someone knew yours is broken and you go pick it up, and, but we don't know who it is. You can be those people providing those needs through biblical generosity. And when we do that, you know what will happen? Smiles will be on our face. God will be glorified. And I believe he's calling us to be this. He's calling us to be living proof of a loving God to a watching world together. God's call will be answered when you pray. Father, in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, I thank you for your word. I pray, God, that, that you would bring unity among this body. You would bring unity among the believers here. You would bring uh, unity that would result in uh, gospel boldness and biblical generosity. Father, I pray that you would be glorified as we live, as you're living proof that you love the world so much that you sent your only son, Jesus. And now, God, would you meet with us 
in this time of communion, as we come to your table, as we come to your supper, God, would you meet with us in a mighty way? Would you be present? In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, I pray. In all of God's people say, Amen. We're going to receive the communion. If I can have the ushers come forward. elements and hold and we'll take them together. Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, it says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, 
took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Today, you, through communion, you have boldly proclaimed the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, together. We've proclaimed the, the death, the burial, the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we look forward to the return of Jesus. And I want us to be ready for the return of Jesus, not in a left behind kind of way, but that the body of Christ is together. I grew up in Army Chapel all my life. All my life. I never attended a, a church until I went to seminary. Outside of an army chapel. I didn't know what real churches did. Not even not a real church, but you know what I'm saying? I didn't know what churches did. What can I tell you? That you can do all that good a church, real church, whatever you want to call it, right here. You can be living proof of loving God to a watching world. Would you like to stand, please? Sing number 229. Number 229, our God. Oh, I'm sorry. All the way when I said the reason is number 460. Number 460, all the way when I say the reason.